Hello and a very warm welcome to LMT Royal YouTube channel. Meghan joined Fortune's Most Powerful Women Summit virtually today and spoke about the state of the digital landscape and the ways it can be shaped into resembling something more humane. She also discussed the Sussex's non-profit Archwell. Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, says, We have got to all put our stock in something that is true and we need to have reliable media and news sources that are telling us the truth dot 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 when you know something is wrong, report it, talk about it. Megan also listed the one clear tangible thing that people can do daily to stop the spread of misinformation. She said, It really just includes not contributing to or even clicking on misinformation. She concluded her conversation with Ellen McGurf with a quote from Georgie O'Keefe, I have already settled it for myself so flattery and criticism go down the same drain and I am quite free. Fortune Most Powerful Women Summit Virtual. I want to focus on a word that you use that I use a lot, which is reckoning. We are we are really here. We are really facing it. Yeah. And I, I, just to prepare for this interview, I listened to a moving graduation speech that you gave. And you not only said Black Lives Matter, you said the names of the people that we've lost, the people that have been murdered. And I was struck by the, the, the courage that it took, the effortless courage that it took to keep bringing these things forward, which you do. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to the moment of reckoning. You're not the only powerful woman, even in this, in this community, who has had a sitting president take a shot at you, mobs come at you, powerful mm -hmm. people and powerful forces try to take you down or try to, to disparage your message. Mm -hmm. This is a tough time for people with power and platforms. What is your best advice for other folks with stakeholders, with um, a desire to weigh in on the important issues of the day, to take those risks uh, carefully, to, to assess them correctly, and then to weigh in? Yes, I mean, I think um, it's about being authentic. And if you look back at anything that I've said, it's really interesting because it often ends up what ends up being inflammatory, it seems, is people's interpretation of it. But if you listen to what I actually say, it's not controversial. And, um, and actually some of it is, is reactive to things that just haven't happened, which is, in some ways, I think you have to have a sense of humor about it, even though there is quite a bit of gravity. And there can be a lot of danger in a misinterpretation of something that was never there to begin with. But that, again, is a byproduct of what is happening right now for all of us. I would say the, the biggest thing and what I have always stuck to, you know, that high school graduation speech, I had done it a, a week or so before. I had pre-taped it for them. It was for, for high 17-year-old girls, right? So the tone and the sentiment, while it was, of course, going to be a call to action, was certainly lighter than where we landed after the murder of George Floyd. I knew I couldn't use that tape, and I, I really struggled, if I'm being honest, about what to say. And I didn't sit down and write anything, and I didn't ask anyone for help with how I should word this. I was just in tears thinking about it, and I was explaining to my husband why I thought that it was so heartbreaking, certainly for me, to be back in Los Angeles and it feeling so reminiscent to the state of, of Los Angeles with the riots after the Rodney King beating. And so for these girls to be graduating from high school, which should be a very celebratory time to be plagued with that unrest, felt troubling to me. So I just spoke from the heart. And, um, and that's probably why it doesn't look polished and that's why it doesn't feel perfect and but that's also why it's authentic. And I think that is the takeaway that I have found is if you don't listen to all the noise out there and you just focus on living a purpose-driven life and you focus on knowing what your own moral compass is, there are always going to be naysayers. But at the end of the day, you know, I used to have a quote up in my room many, many moons ago and it resonates now perhaps more than ever when you see the vitriol and noise that can be um, out in the world and it's, it's by Georgia O'Keeffe and it's I've already settled it for myself so flattery and criticism go down the same drain and I am quite free and the moment that you are able to be liberated from all of these other opinions of what you know to be true then I think it's very easy to just live with truth and live with authenticity and that is how I that's how I choose to move through the world another analysis the truth about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's reality show. When Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced that they were stepping back from their royal duties and moving to California, one could have only hoped that it would seg into a reality show, 
or that we'd at least get paparazzi pics of them shopping or drinking green juices while walking with baby Archie. Interestingly, rumors have popped up that royal watchers might be getting the former. The two are in talks with Netflix about a fly-on-the-wall reality series about their charity work, which would offer a glimpse into their lives over the course of three months. It was unclear whether or not cameras would be allowed in their Montecito home. The couple signed a megawatt deal with the streaming service to produce educational and family programming. They said, in a statement at the time, our focus will be on creating content that informs, but also gives hope. But their plans might have changed, emphasis on might have, because there are conflicting reports about what the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are really up to with this shift in career. People are already trashing Meghan Markle for her Netflix deal. Everyone seems to have something to say when it comes to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's deal with Netflix. For example, The Sun source reportedly said, they may have had all these lofty ideas about producing epics highlighting environmental causes and the poverty gap, but Netflix obviously wants their pound of flesh. It will all be very tasteful and not Katie Price and Peter Andre style reality TV, but they want to give people a glimpse into their lives and see all the charity work they do. The report also had some editorializing to do, with Ingrid Seward, editor of Majesty magazine, telling the outlet that she thought it was deceptive to make a reality show for Netflix. She said, we were told they had gone to California for greater privacy so it all appears rather hypocritical. For some people in the UK Meghan will never be able to get anything right. But people might be getting ahead of themselves if they think they're getting a Kardashian level glimpse into the day-to-day -day lives of Harry and Meghan. But Meghan Markle and Prince Harry denied they're making a reality show. Although a reality show with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry would be a gift from the Netflix gods. Don't get your hopes or your gripes up. A spokesperson for the couple shut down the gossip that they were letting cameras get a glimpse into their lives. The spokesman said, the Duke and Duchess are not taking part in any reality shows. And if you think about it, it does make sense. Even though the couple has stepped away from royal duties, a reality show is a bit of a stretch for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Docu-series and other types of programming that coincide with their philanthropic work and their values sound much more plausible. Still, Meghan and Harry stands can dream, right? If only for a glimpse into that $14 million house they bought near friend Oprah Winfrey. So on to other news. Markle's potential run for president. Meghan Markle caused a stir overseas upon marrying Prince Harry and becoming a member of the royal family in 2018. But by far, the biggest controversy surrounding the royal couple came when the Duke and Duchess of Sussex decided to step down from the royal family and move to California, Meghan's birthplace. After Harry and Meghan's departure from royal life, questions arose as to what the two public figures planned to do next. But staying quiet and out of the limelight doesn't seem to be on the to-do list, especially in a U.S. presidential election year. In an interview with Marie Claire, Meghan was adamant about never being afraid to speak her mind on things that matter. Meghan said, I know what it's like to have a voice and also what it's like to feel voiceless. I also know that so many men and women have put their lives on the line for us to be heard. And that opportunity, that fundamental right, is in our ability to exercise our right to vote and to make all of our voices heard. Meghan's voice has made the Duchess of Sussex unlike many other royals. Feminist journalist Gloria Steinem described Meghan as herself. Smart, authentic, funny, political, opposite of what a stereotypical princess or duchess might be. But could the Duchess's political side mean a possible stint in the White House? Just maybe? Meghan Markle is engaged in politics. Meghan Markle, a former actress, stayed busy with her formal royal duties as the Duchess of Sussex until she and husband Prince Harry decided to leave the royal family behind in pursuit of other ventures. Meanwhile, the royal never gave up her US citizenship, but could that be for her own political gain? A close friend of Markle claims one of the reasons she was so keen not to give up her American citizenship was so she had the option to go into politics. I think if Meghan and Harry ever gave up their title she would seriously consider running for president. President Meghan Markle may have a nice ring to it, but for the Duchess herself, she seems uninterested. Those who work with the Duchess dismiss claims she has plans for any political career. The source said, while there's no denying she is interested and engaged in politics as a topic, she harbors no ambition to enter a career in politics herself. Royals aren't supposed to be political. Looking back at past presidential hopefuls, many had previously claimed disinterest in the title before throwing their hat in the race. Will Meghan Markle do the same? Her biographer says yes. Amit Scabi, a royal reporter, claims the Duchess of Sussex is interested in the White House position. Scabi said, in a true royalty documentary called Meghan for President, 
She has her eyes set on the U.S. presidency. She is the embodiment of the American dream. One day we may see Meghan become president. Meghan has one big obstacle in her way, though, her royal title. An expert on the royal family, Marlene Koenig, explained, the sovereign, who represents all of the people, must be non-political. It is the job of the elected officials to be political. Yet Meghan hasn't fully followed that rule, and she's faced her fair share of backlash over it. In 2016, Meghan gave her honest opinions on President Donald Trump to Larry Wilmore on The Nightly Show. Granted, she was yet to be a duchess then. In 2020, Meghan spoke out about the importance of voting multiple times. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex even made an appearance as part of the Time 100, encouraging Americans to vote against hate speech, misinformation, and online negativity. Only time will tell if Meghan 2024 will be the next big political slogan of our time. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus even more LMT Royal videos about your favorite royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell, so you don't miss a single one. Don't stop.